The world of Smash Brothers is filled with speculation. People coming up with theories, crafting up concepts, and sometimes dropping leaks. But oftentimes with these leaks, we focus more on the hoaxes that ended up being wrong or fake. The real leaks become the status quo because they ended up being real, so we tend to forget exactly what was leaked. So today, let's look at leaks that ended up being real for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The closer and closer we get to a Smash Bros. reveal, the more likely it is for something to leak out. During development, small teams are really the only ones privy to unreleased information. Developers of course have all this information, but also company representatives involved in negotiating terms with other companies. Then we get a bit closer to a reveal and other things need to be made, such as the trailer needs to be created or the website needs to be updated. And finally, when the reveal is upon us, the odds of that information getting out is at its peak. And that's exactly what seemed to happen with a Reddit user named Practical Brush 12. On two separate occasions, Practical Brush dropped Reddit posts just minutes before a Smash reveal to leak who the character was. In January 2020, just 10 minutes before the Sakurai presentation that revealed Byleth, Practical Brush posted on Reddit revealing not only details about Byleth, but also the fact that Cuphead would be a skin for Me Gunner. Later that year in October, we got just a little bit more of a heads up from Mr. Brush. 30 minutes before Steve's reveal, they made yet another post stating quite simply that it's Minecraft Steve, but then even doubled down to say that his smash is a piston, which is pretty vague on first glance, but then when someone asked for clarification, Brush said that they believed it was Steve's final smash. Now on its own, predicting those characters is pretty good, but it could be as easy as hitting a bullseye on a dartboard. There are thousands of character guesses, some are bound to be right, and getting two, while very unlikely, is still very possible. But Practical Brush cleverly included more specific details to show that they weren't just luckily guessing, but they actually had insider knowledge. Parts of Byleth's moveset, the Cuphead knee skin, Steve having a piston for his final smash, these are all things that sort of show that Practical Brush is actually privy to some kind of insider knowledge and isn't just luckily guessing these characters. Now where Brush got the information, well, your guess is as good as mine. And on that topic, there are some other leaks that were just packed with so much information that there's no way that it was lucky guesswork. And one was all the way back before Smash Ultimate had even been formally revealed on, of all places, 4chan. Just one day before Nintendo's E3 Direct, an anonymous user posted on 4chan's V-Board with a bit of an info dump. They dropped the name of the title, which at that point we hadn't learned about yet, as well as the release date, both of which ended up being correct. They also stated that all characters would be returning, as well as the addition of Inkling, Daisy, and Ridley, many old stages would be returning, Bomberman as an assist trophy, and all of the maps would have, quote, Final Destination and Omega layout. Later on, they said they saw the trailer with their own eyes and also gave information on Super Mario Party. Additionally, they stated that clone characters get an E or a 3 next to their name, and cited Lucina and Lucas as examples. Wolf also apparently has a new kit, and the Inkling's final smash is a Squid Sisters concert where the screen gets smaller. So the weird thing about this leak is that it's like 85% right, but it has some very key details incorrect. First off, the fact of all maps having both Final Destination and Omega layouts is confusing because, well, those are the same thing. Additionally, Lucas isn't classified as an Echo Fighter, so he wouldn't have the E next to his name. Wolf Fairy intentionally does not have a new kit. And the Inkling's Final Smash isn't the Squid Sister concert, but literally everything else, including the release date, name, the new reveals, and the specific reference to the E next to clones, all kind of tells me that this was totally real, but the person reporting on this just kind of misunderstood some stuff. The leaker even states that they watched the presentation at two times speed, so with a half hour filled with tons of information now being absorbed in like 15 minutes, it's really understandable how some of these mistakes could have been made. Especially when you consider this person probably wasn't supposed to be watching the presentation in the first place. For example, Inkling's moveset is followed up immediately by the Squid Sisters assist trophy reveal, so at double speed I could very easily see mistaking them for a final smash. Overall, it's obvious that this leak was totally real, and you have to remember that not all leakers are really as smash focused as we are. We know the ins and outs and will pay attention to the tiniest little detail, while as leakers are mostly just concerned with getting the information out there. They just relay information they've seen or heard, and it's just up to us to believe them. 
But sometimes we don't even believe something that is completely and obviously real. One of the things that gets really scrutinized is photographic evidence. We used to live in a culture of pics or it didn't happen. But with Photoshop and mods and 3D modeling becoming so readily available, we're becoming more critical as a result. It's just too easy to fake things nowadays. The Ken leak is perhaps the most well-known real leak that Smash Ultimate has seen. In September 2018, a user on 4chan posted an image of Ken from Street Fighter on the Splatoon stage alongside Ivysaur, Pichu, and Pac-Man, claiming that Ken would at some point be added to the game. This leak definitely had some non-believers, but as I recall, there were many that were fairly confident that this was the real thing. But the image had a few issues that made people second guess it. First, the bottom and right side of the image shows some text and meters that are clearly not meant to be there in the official game. Now with hindsight, this is easily explained away as something that's part of the development or debug build of the game to show the metrics of the game while it's running. But at the time, people were skeptical as it could easily have been placed there by a faker trying to make things seem more legitimate. The same can be said for the timer in the top right, which is frozen at 2 minutes 30 seconds, something that isn't possible to do in the real build of the game. However, a few things added to the possibility of this being real. The first is that on Pichu's portrait, its ear is cut off, but this actually matches up with how Pichu's portrait appears in the E3 build of the game. Additionally, some people noticed an issue with the shadows on Ken's foot not appearing on the metal grate. An explanation for this could be that it was easily something overlooked when a faker was creating this, but the problem was it ended up being real. DJ3DS over on Smashboards actually recreated the shot in the demo of Smash Ultimate, with Pikachu standing in for Pichu and Ryu standing in for Ken, all in the exact same spots. And lo and behold, the shadow glitch actually showed up again, which confirmed in many people's eyes that the Ken leak was real. Which of course we then learned that it was, and the thumbs up Ken has become a sort of symbol for real leaks now. Although now you may even call it a red herring, as even fakers can include a thumbs up Ken. Random gaming enthusiasts aren't the only ones who leak information, though. Sometimes, it's Nintendo themselves. On the night before the August 8th Smash Ultimate Direct, a video on Nintendo's Smash Bros. channel had its title updated. While this video was just a sample for the Galaga medley song, the title was updated to have the name Blood Tears slash Monster Dance, song titles from Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. This effectively confirmed that Simon was going to be joining the roster, and it was less than one day from the reveal itself. Of course, the additions of Richter, Dark Samus, Krom, and King K. Rool were all still a surprise, but there was the expectation of Castlevania being revealed because of this YouTube title, and it was all on some poor intern. Now, all these leaks are nice, but they're pretty isolated. With the exception of Practical Brush, none of them seem to be repeat offenders. But one user stands above the rest, having such notoriety, for better or for worse, for leaking Super Smash Bros. information. Vergabin first rose to notoriety with regards to Smash by posting on GameFAQs in March of 2018 about a new Smash game, talking about Ridley being a newcomer and stating that the new game would be a fully new game rather than a port. This was a big point of controversy at the time, since when Smash Ultimate was teased, we were just two years outside of the final Smash 4 DLC, so it seemed a bit too soon for an all-new Smash game leading many to think that it would just be a port of Smash 4 with a few updated and additional characters. A few months later, Vergabin again posted on GameFAQ saying that Simon would also be a newcomer, along with Smash 4's whole roster returning, as well as the big returns of Ice Climbers and Snake, which were huge points to hit, and keep in mind he was like a month ahead of the E3 reveal of Ultimate, so he had a lot of heads up on what was going to be in the game. During the summer after Ultimate's reveal, Vergabin would state that there were only about a half dozen newcomers left to be revealed, and that two of them would be Isabelle and an unspecified Generation 7 Pokemon. Vergabin also stated in August, after the Smash Ultimate Direct that month, that Ken would be joining, as well as a fighter owned by Square Enix. At the time, there was some contention as to the validity of Vergabin versus the infamous Grinch leak, with many effectively choosing a side to support. Vergabin spoke up on this specifically, citing that his sources have said Isaac would be an assist trophy, which directly conflicted with the Grinch leak as Isaac was a supposed full fighter according to that. Everything Verg said would eventually come to pass, much to the dismay of some Grinch believers. And besides some statements that would then be retracted, like the inclusion of a Grand Blue Fantasy character for Smash, 
really only one point was causing people to doubt Vergabin in a post Grinch leak world. He kept bringing up Minecraft. The first mention of Minecraft Vergabin gave us was in May 2018, stating that Minecraft would be represented in some form, and several times he would double down on this. Specifically, the day after the Fighter Pass was revealed, Vergabin said that one of his contacts heard that Steve would be a playable character, which this contact would reaffirm later on. However, with plenty of time passing with neither hide nor hair of Minecraft being shown, many thought that he was simply incorrect. Maybe his contacts were misled or intentionally misleading him, or maybe he was lying to stir up the masses. But whatever it was, people were starting to question Vergabin. But then, 2020 rolled around and we finally saw that Blockhead Steve revealed for Smash Ultimate, finally putting to rest the uncertainty of Vergabin's claims regarding Minecraft. It had been two years since Vergabin first stated that Smash Ultimate would see some kind of Minecraft content, so for it to take this long to reveal seems a bit odd. But Kaplan, one of the founders of Mojang, said on Twitter that the talks for Steve to be included in Smash started in around 2014 or 2015, give or take. Sakurai also said that the complexity of Steve's moveset was a real challenge to implement, so that could potentially explain why it would take so long for him to finally be ready for release. I wouldn't be surprised if they went back to the drawing board at least once in all that time, or at least revisited certain aspects of his moveset. They ultimately hit the ball out of the park, but the amount of work it took to get there is just crazy to think about. Despite all of the criticism he had coming his way, Vergabin really stuck to what he was hearing from his sources, which included Hiro, Banjo-Kazooie, and Terry. He never got the chance to speak on Joker, as supposedly the original plan was to debut the Fighter Pass with Hiro, but Joker being the first DLC character ended up being a last minute change in the lineup. Vergaman had said multiple times prior to Joker's reveal that the first character was going to be a Square Enix rep, so this changeup also made people kind of doubt him. But then the second character ended up being Hero, so it kind of just became Wash. And for Byleth, all he really did was deconfirm certain characters or companies, rather than confirm who the character was. Something kinda tells me he didn't want the full force of the Smash community to shoot the messenger for what would end up being another Fire Emblem character, so he took the path of least resistance and just deconfirmed things all over the place. Either that or he truly just didn't know the actual character. And so we're here, towards the end of Fighter Pass 2, and Vergabin has surprisingly been fairly quiet. Nintendo must have gotten really good at shutting down leaks, because I genuinely can't think of a leak for Fighter Pass 2 that was ultimately true. The most Vergabin has said was that Nintendo met with Koei Tecmo, which many believed would confirm Ryu Hayabusa, but we've yet to see any fruits on that claim. The working theory right now is that they were simply meeting to get the rights for a spirit event. So those are some of the interesting leaks for Smash Ultimate that I felt were worth covering. With the DLC for Smash nearly ending, I just wanted to take a look back at the climate of the community back when we knew so little. If you'd like me to cover other leaks, or leaks from previous Smash games, let me know down in the comments. Until next time guys, I hope you enjoyed, peace out.